Deirdre, in trying to understand the emergence of consciousness in biological history, I think it's important to understand the emergence of dreams throughout evolution. So what can we say about that? What do we know about the uh, appearance of dreams from an evolutionary perspective? Well, we, we know which animals have rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep, and which ones don't, and about where that appeared in evolutionary history. And that's highly associated it, with dreams. It is. Most, most dreams um, occur in REM sleep. And basically, it's with the start of, of mammals. They're, they're rudimentary REM-like things in a few birds and the monotremes, sort of pre-marsupials, but it doesn't look like full-fledged mm -hmm. REM sleep. And then all mammals do seem to have pretty much full-fledged REM sleep cycling through the night, with the exception of the cetaceans, the whales and dolphins, mm -hmm. who sleep with one hemisphere at a time and are just <laughs> completely in a category by themselves. They've, mm -hmm. Their sleep has clearly diverged mm -hmm. off away from other mammals. But, but the vast majority of mammals have clear REM cycling and the vast majority of ma non-mammals don't. So it appeared about with mammals. It seems to have something to do with thermoregulation. That, that's when, when... This is the REM part of it. Yes. The biological yes. basis, right. That, that REM appeared at the time that thermoregulation appeared in an evolutionary sense. And, and thermoregulation is pretty much turned off during REM sleep. And the assumption is that its controls are being fine-tuned during during that. Or uh, kind of refurbishing itself in yes. some way. Yes, yeah. Okay, so, so that argument would suggest, correct me if I'm wrong, that because thermoregulation has to be fine-tuned or adjusted during REM sleep, and that coincidentally REM sleep is also triggering dreams, that dreams are sort of co-evolving, but really has no particular purpose. It's, it's riding along the wave of the thermoregulation. Well, that, that's, that's the basis way, way back when mammals, yeah, when mammals yeah, right, started. Right, right, right. And I'm not sure I would assume all mammals dream in the sense that we talk about human dreams. I mean, if their brains are activating periodically during sleep, they're probably having some images or experiences associated with that, but we might or might not call that dreaming in, in some of the simpler sure, mammals. But, and, the, and their consciousness may not be the same kind of consciousness that we have, so there may be a yeah. parallelism. I mean, clearly, dreams don't appear until consciousness appears, I think, mm -hmm. almost right. by so, so this is the nexus that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. this nexus between dreams and consciousness. I mean, one can argue that, uh, I mean, this is probably wrong, but let me just throw it out, that because you have the thermoregulation, which call it, which needs REM sleep, and the REM sleep triggers dreams, and dreams gives a sense of this, this experience, that that, in essence, helps develop consciousness. One can make the, the causal argument that way, or that as consciousness has developed independently, then the, when the REM activities trigger that consciousness thinking, and therefore dreams developed, or dreams and consciousness sort of co-evolved. I mean, there are all these possibilities, but what's clear seems to be is that you have to consider dreams in terms of understanding the developmental history of consciousness. Yes, and I certainly don't think it's as simple as they're an epiphenomena of thermoregulation, because okay. okay. that's way back in evolutionary history, and and humans have many more neurotransmitter systems that are getting either upregulated or downregulated during REM sleep that aren't in other mammals, or, or a few don't even exist in other mammals. Some of the brain areas that are the most or least active in our brains are ones that didn't even come along till primates. So obviously our REM sleep has much further evolved. And I, I think that... But our consciousness is more evolved. He, so the, 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 the question is the relationship between these two, between the development of consciousness and the development of dreaming. Yes. I mean, but, how close do you think those well, are? Well, I think that REM sleep could easily have certain functions for all mammals and that the larger brained ones have layered a lot of other functions on because nature isn't wasteful it tends not to just you know sort of one thing as huge as the amount of time that REM sleep is doesn't usually have one function it usually just okay. has function after function layered mm -hmm. onto it mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. it's existed through all mm -hmm. of mammalian history mm -hmm. 
up to us. So I certainly think that that the state of consciousness of dreams seems to be getting used for a number of other things in humans that we're still thinking in that different biochemical state and working on problem solving and sort of adjusting our emotional states and and that may or may not be shared with you know how many other species is we're the only one that gives clear dream reports there are a few dream <laughs> reports from gorillas allegedly right. but um signing gorillas <laughs> penny patterson says Sign dream reports in the morning, but not many animals can report their dreams. So what is your gut feeling about the co-development of dreams and consciousness? How, how closely are they tied? Consciousness and dreams, the evolutionary development. I, I think they, they're just completely intermeshed and causation probably in both directions. I mean, you couldn't have dream consciousness without having a brain that had develop the potential for consciousness. But on the other hand, you see the most REM sleep in the developing brain, and it, it becomes a smaller part of the sleep cycle the older we get. So it looks like it's very necessary to higher brain processes. You also see more of it in the larger brained animals. Um, it, it's contributing to a lot of things about the way our brain works, but I think including including consciousness. So what you're saying then is that the development of dreams uh, as an evolutionary uh, fact has enriched the nature of consciousness as consciousness has evolved itself, even though consciousness may have more impact on dreams, but dreams has some feedback on consciousness. Yes. And then, and then in a, just in a much more philosophical sense, I think dreams have contributed to various of our understandings about the nature of ourselves and the nature of reality. I mean, it, it's almost the only instance where we can really subjectively experience that fact that our internal experience of objects and people is not really just some one-to-one -one they're being mm -hmm. shot into <laughs> us through our eyes or our ears that that we are getting some data and somewhat later constructing these images out of it that that we can really experience that in dreams because we're seeing people who at least are not there right now and in most cases are patched together mm -hmm. from six different people we've ever mm -hmm. ever seen you know events likewise and and yet they are experienced subjectively completely real and i think that even primitive man got some sense that that was telling us something about the the mm -hmm. nature of reality but certainly philosophers from from the time people were settled down writing and recording these thoughts were were thinking about that